Welcome to part 12 to our Galaxy Defiance tutorial series where we build a simple space shooter using components in Godot. In this video, we're going to be creating the score and game stats for our game. And there's also one other thing I am upgrading to Godot 4.2. And with that, there is going to be a few little things that we need to mention. Um, the first one being that once I opened the project in 4.2, I got these error messages right here. And you can see it's having a hard stat hard time finding game stat inside of game stats. Oh, that one you can ignore. You probably don't even have that one. Um, but you can see our score component has an error uh, saying it cannot find global position. So let's come into the score component. And... Um, not our score component, our spawner component. Our score component. Yeah, the spawner component has that one. The score component, that you probably won't have that error either. The spawner component. Okay. You might not have any of these errors because I actually updated the components already. Uh, so if you've recently downloaded them, you might not have any of them. However, the error that I'm getting here is the spawner component use it, uses a global position as an argument. And global position is already a variable on node 2D. So this variable is um, called a shadow variable. You can see Godot has a, um, the identifier global position will be shadowed. And that's not good. Um, originally, when I made the spawner component, it was a node. And node doesn't have a global position variable, so it was okay for me to use that. But then later I changed it, and now I'm suffering the consequences of changing this part without changing this part. Um, that's why I didn't catch it. But we can just change this to global spawn position, like that. And then down here, we'll just copy this down here as well. And again, if you've already downloaded the components, this might already be updated for you. Just save that and that will fix it, okay? Now there's one other issue, which is the score component has a game stats variable that is throwing an error here, and that's because we've never created this game stats resource, um, this class name. So that doesn't actually matter. If we run the game, we can still actually run the game just fine because we're not using this score component at all yet. But we're going to need to fix that. So and this was me not, not really, it was a little bit of lack of foresight on my end where I should have, if I was going to include this component, then I needed to include its dependency, which is this game stats. But we'll just make it now. So let's right click down here. We'll do create new script game underscore stats. And it will inherit from resource this because uh, we want it to be a resource. Now, if we click on game stats here, we can do class name up here at the top, game stats like this, and save. We'll just save it like that. And now, if we come back into our, um, if we come back into our component here for score, it's going to be happy because that exists now. Game stats exists. We created this game stats class name here, so Godot can find it. Okay. Now let's talk about our game stats. So the game stats is going to have a variable called score, which will be an int and we'll set it to zero. Also going to have a variable called high score. Be an int, we'll set it to zero. And we'll have a signal called score changed that will take that will pass out a new score. Um, it will emit out this new score and sig null like that. Now we want to be able to emit this signal every time our score is changed and Godot has a way to create a setter function on your variables and a setter function is just a function that runs every single time that variable gets set. So if we say score equals five then this setter function will be run. And Godot 4 allows us to create setter functions in line using a colon like this, and then just typing set, and then passing in some value. That's the value that it will be set to. 
So if we say score equals five, then value will equal five. And we want to pass in, and then we want to say score equals value. Because if you create your own setter function, then you actually have to set your score to that value. If we didn't, you could say score equals five, and your score wouldn't change because you didn't actually update it. <laughs> By default, it updates it automatically, right? But the minute we create our own function, it's not going to anymore. And then from here, we can say score changed dot emit, and then we can pass out the score value. So score. Oh, inside there. So now every time the score is set, then um, it will emit our score change signal. And this allows us to connect score changed to some UI elements. So if we have a score label, every time our score variable is changed, we can connect that to our UI elements. Now, game stats could be a global singleton instead of a resource, um, but I found that I would rather make it a resource because a global singleton, everything has access to it. With a resource, only the things that we give access to it will have access to it. And I'll show you how that works. Okay. Now, when we make it a resource, we actually have to create that resource. So if we right click down here, we can do create new resource and find game stats. And we'll just call it game underscore stats dot TRES. There we go. And if we double click on it, we can actually edit our high score and score here. So for debugging purposes, you could manually set these right here before you even run your game. Now, if we come to our world right here, we can create a label to display this score. So we'll click here. I'm going to do um, label. And I'm going to call this score label. This. And I'm going to just type score here. And I already have some fonts set up. So if we come into fonts here, we have the Kenny mini square and I've created new, uh, default label settings and title label settings. Now if you right click on fonts or anywhere and you just do resource label settings, you can see you can easily create your own label settings. And all they have is a font and then a size and then some other properties that I didn't mess with. But um, the default label settings is just this font with size eight, and then the title is the font with size 16, so twice the size. If we click on our score label here, we can drag over our default label settings, and there we have this new font. We can drag our score label um, edges here, and then we can set the horizontal to center and the vertical to center. And now our score is centered, just like that. Okay. And we don't need to mess with the anchors because this game is not going to scale. The way we've set up our scaling for aspect ratio is just to keep the aspect ratio. So it's fine for our label to be set up this way. Let's come into our world and we'll drag in score here so that we have access to the score label. And then we want to set the score label equal to our score. Um, but we want to give world access to the game stats. So we're going to export var game stats right here we'll just say game stats so that gives world access to game stats but we actually have to drag it over we have to say which stats we're accessing so these ones right here technically we could create multiple different game stats but we're just going to grab this one and inside of here we'll say game stat or let's see game stats dot score changed dot connect so we're going to connect to our score change signal on our game stats again we're just connecting to that that signal and then we're going to run a function let's create this function we'll call it update score and it will take a new score as an int and it won't return anything so we can just return void and we can say no let's call it update score label And then we'll just say score label dot text equals score colon space. And then we want to add. Now 
we want to do our new score after the score like this, but this is a number and this right here is a string. So we have to connect them or we have, yeah, we have to connect them together. And to do that, they both have to be strings, which is like words. We're going to convert this to a string using str like this. Otherwise we'll get an error and then we can connect to update score label. Now, because both update score label takes a new score and our score changed signal emits a new score, we don't need to bind or unbind any arguments. They're correctly set up. Now we can also just call update score label right here at the start and then pass in game stats dot score like this. So that right when the game starts, it has the starting score. If we run our game, we can see we got a score of zero, but if we were to come into our game stats, change the score to 50, and then run the game, it's going to have a score of 50. So you can see that it is automatically updating that number um, when, when it changes. When we run the game, we immediately update the score label. Now we just need to allow our enemies to give us score. Let's come into our enemy here. And we're going to click on enemy and we're going to click new component and we'll find our score component like this. And we just got an error message. Now, I don't know. I actually, this is the second time I've recorded this video because of this error message right here. So I was expecting this. I don't know why we're getting this error message. This looks like a bug with Godot, but it's hard to say. Um, this error right here is basically saying it can't add the score component. However, I did find a workaround, which is we open up our score component, double click on it, and then we just hit control S to save it. Now click, click inside of here first and then do control S. Then click on enemy and add component and do score component. And it didn't work, of course. I was so confident too. I thought I had the solution. Um, let's try adding a return here just to change something about it and then saving it and clearing that. And now let's try adding a score component. Oh, it worked. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. There's something weird going on, but that seemed to work. Just making a single, adding a single space here. We could probably remove the space and it would still work now. Um, yeah, it does work. So it just needed to be like updated, like somehow and then saved. Um, but that worked. So now we have our score component inside of enemy. And if you come into the score component, you can see it does need access to game stats. Otherwise it's going to error. So let's give it access to our game stats. The same one that we had for our label. The adjust amount can be five. That's how much it's going to add or subtract from the score. And we'll come into the enemy script here and um, we'll get access to our score component here. Drag it over with the control, drag, drop, hold control as score component. Now, when do we want to give our player score? We want to give them score when they run out of health or when the enemy runs out of health. Not when the enemy is destroyed because the enemy destroys itself when it leaves the screen. So then the player would get score just by avoiding enemies. We want the player to have to destroy the enemy. So we'll say um, stats component dot no health. It's a signal on our stats component dot connect. And we'll just connect to an inline function here or an anonymous function. This is just a function that we're creating right away instead of having to create it down here and give it a name. So it doesn't have a name um, the same way we, we did with our hurt. Then we can just say score component dot. Uh, hmm. We're not getting autocomplete on our score component here. It should be adjust score. We should be seeing adjust score. Oh, I did scale component score component dot adjust score there we go and it does take an optional amount if you wanted to pass in your own amount but if you leave it empty it will just use the default amount that we set here this adjust amount there we go now when we run the game every time an enemy runs out of health it will add to our score and you can see that is happening 
So what happens? Well, every time we run out of health, this score, this game stats right here, uh, or the score component on our enemy that has access to the game stats sets the score. And when the score gets set, it emits this score change signal. Then inside of our world here, whenever, which also has access to the game stats, whenever the score change signal is emitted, we update this label. There's kind of multiple steps here. It can be a little bit tricky to follow, right? But the essence of it is the, the enemy runs out of health, which has the score component set the score, which emits a signal. There's a trigger, right? Um, this, is, this, is what the, this is the sequence here. So we have the no health signal, which sets the score, which signals the score changed, which then uh, updates the score label. So this is the sequence. No health. Enemy no health signal connects to, to the um, score component, which sets the score. which then signals score change. This is, yeah, and then updates the score label. So that's the sequence. It's a pretty, you know, like it's a little bit, it's a little bit to follow, especially if you're new to this type of thing. I thought I'd write it out there specifically. But that's going to be it for this video. We've set up our basic score. Any new enemy that we create will have a score component attached to it, and we can give it an appropriate um adjust amount depending on how hard it is to kill that enemy. If you have a harder enemy to kill, you'll want to increase the score by more points to reward the player for killing the harder enemy. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned it and enjoyed or <laughs> enjoyed it and learned something from it. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Uh, if you're this far into the series, you know the drill. I have a Godot course on Godot 4. If you're interested in that, there'll be a link in the description at the end of this video where you can purchase the course. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.